show is sponsored by Hive Mind CRM. It is more than just a CRM. It is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one CRM. You can have unlimited websites and users. You can call, text, RVM, and email all in one user interface. And you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses. 65% of companies start using a CRM system within the first five years of business. Once implemented, the hive mind will save you on marketing, give you more time, and make more money. One of our users had his first $100,000 a month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings. And of course, to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. Welcome back to the St. Clair Speak Show podcast. I'm your host, Yahavi St. Clair. Guys, I am so excited for this interview. Can't you tell I am sitting down with co-founder of Hive Mind CRM, business and automation platform. I'm sitting down with Daniel Martinez. This guy oh. is li- he is changing the game. Changing the game in automation, changing the game in real estate. And if you've seen some of my content in the past, you know I kind of like dabble in and out of automation and I talk about real estate a lot. This like this is just a blessing from the universe. Daniel, I want to welcome you onto the show. Please give our listeners a three to five minute introduction on yourself, your brand, your business, and what brings you onto the podcast. Sure, man. So my name is Daniel Martinez. I'm originally from Chicago. I moved to Atlanta for six years and now I live in Southern California. How I got into entrepreneurship, I just turned 30 this year. So everybody thinks I'm, a, I'm an old fart, even though I got great hair. See, I got a lot of great hair. <laughs> it's hereditary. It's hereditary. I got in the business four and a half years ago. I actually am originally, I used to do trucking. I used to load trucks, forklift driver, got into trucking, actually worked for a company for two years. I actually started my own company. My first thing in business was on trucking in general. Started a trucking company, got up to five trucks. We did like a half million in revenue. Got out of that, started doing real estate, fell into data and software. And now that's all I do is data, software, real estate. And then I'm just helping people automate their business. We help a lot of people just, man, just make more money. That's been the goal, man. We've really... Come, came, came a long way through business, and this has been my, my favorite part, my favorite business so far, and just really helping people accelerate and automate their back end because a lot of people, they struggle with their task in general in business, and it shouldn't be that way with HiveMind. Not to turn to pitch HiveMind, but HiveMind's dope, and it's really, I've used it in like three of my businesses right now, and it's really helped me like control, manage, and just do what I love versus having to do everything. So it's really been a journey for me, and I'm excited to be here and excited to excited to contribute to the podcast in the world. <laughs> Man, look at you being all modest. Look, I want to dive right into the sauce. Okay, so <laughs> you went from you went you literally went from a million dollar industry in trucking to a million dollar industry in what you're doing in real estate and automation. What was that transition like for you? What made you say, "All right, this is I don't want to do this anymore. This is what I want to do full time, and I want to commit to it." I don't know if I can cuss here, but I lost my ass, man. I lost yeah, my ass. Again. I lost my ass. So trucking is, and this is where I didn't know anything about business. So business, you have a profit margin. So there's publicly traded companies like FedEx, UPS, Old Dominion, uh, Saya. All these companies operate off of 3% profit margin or less, usually, in, tra- in the trucking space. If you think about it, that's crazy. So every dollar they make, they spend over 95 cents of it. It's insane mm. for business operation, everything, equipment, everything. So when you start a company like that, I was at like ten percent. So you really gotta, you really gotta work or have people work for you. And ten percent on paper, like stuff can go wrong. I had a maintenance bill of seven thousand dollars. My insurance at one point was ten thousand dollars a month. Like this, this, this thing was insane. Like literally spending money everywhere from employees, fuel, equipment to maintenance, like it was nuts. So I literally lost a hundred grand doing that business over two years. So I was transitioning into something else that had a better profit margin because I knew I, I enjoyed business. I enjoyed the time period of a business, but trucking was not it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So eventually fell into real estate and then I was doing real estate for a year, just fell into data and then I did software. So I'm kind of like real estate, data, then software. And it's kind of been that road where it was 
real estate kind of opened my eyes to the possibilities and then I kind of fell into other niches along the way. Where now I, do, I kind of do a bunch of just different products and services for the real estate industry and I do real estate too. So it's kind of a cool mix of things. We were talking a little bit right before we started recording. What I'm also seeing in this industry and in, like, it's actually on the verge of, it's kind of like the new thing, like the new kids on the block, right? Real estate, data, software, and all it ties together. And CRMs, there are a lot of competitors out there, right? But I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of success and I'm hearing a lot of success. I'm listening to everyone else. Yeah, we run everything through our CRM and boom, boom, boom. That's it. Like, you know, put everything in a pipeline and, you know, delegate out. And when I read up about you and it's, it's so funny. Again, I told you this before, but I had this marked on my calendar for a reason because there is something in these CRMs, there's something in these systems that's working for investors. Oh, yeah. What are people saying about your services and your products? So the, the biggest thing about CRMs is that like most small businesses don't use it. Like they don't use it. Like I, we've had a clients that come in with spreadsheets, don't even use a piece of paper, pen and paper. Like if you're doing that type of business, you cannot grow the business that way. You just can't, like you can't hire employees and hand your piece of paper to the person that's miles away. You know, you just can't do it. So a CRM is a customer relations management tool. It's supposed to organize and help you do more deals, do more, make more contacts, just to help you do more and organize it. So what's what's the number one people struggle with in real estate it's follow-up follow-up it takes seven to twelve contacts to convert a, a sale like you're not if you cold call somebody you're not you might get it but it's not likely it's like a like probably a five percent chance you're gonna get a, you're gonna get the contract on the first call it's just not gonna happen so what do you do after that you have to follow up you have to follow up with text email direct mail any way you can just to make sure you hit that points of contact before they convert and with real estate it's all about timing so Whenever that person is ready to sell, you want to be the person that comes to come to thought because you've been not necessarily pestering them, but you've been the one on their mind constantly following up with them. So with follow up and being able to automate, it's just outreach, outreach, outreach. Hey, make that first contact and just set up a follow up campaign and let it go. The beautiful thing, beautiful thing about systems and automation is that now when people are going through the automation loop, as soon as they respond, boom, they pop up right up top. So if you're reaching thousands of people like we do in real estate, whenever somebody essentially responds, calls back, call, calls you back or does anything like that, it pops up straight in your system and now you can follow up with that lead, see all the conversations, you can see any notes you did on for that person and really have, rebuild that conversation. Like you're talking to thousands of people at once and remembering everything and coordinating everything. So it's one of those things where like you have to have to have a CRM if you're in any type of business, doesn't matter if you're real estate or not, you have to have a CRM and you have to coordinate your contacts and make sure you follow up with people to get more conversions. Just the bottom line. You brought me back to a horror, a horror moment. When I first start, when I got, when I first got started in real estate wholesaling, I, I did not even know what the hell a CRM was. It was literally pen to pad. And it was literally the worst experience because as you said, the money's in the follow up. I was so disorganized, but I'm like, yo, I feel like I was working so hard and kind of like to reiterate what you're saying. It's, it's working smarter, not harder in the same way, but you're still working hard. Right. But you're working so smarter and you're working more efficiently. Right. And you're making sure that you touch base with everyone. So it, it, it's, it's pretty interesting how, how much more you could get done with the CRM. And it, it applies, as you said, this goes beyond real estate, even in podcasting, right? You're a podcast host yourself. You understand the power of the CRM. I use it from time to time to help me stay formatted and organized. But there are times where, you know, life happens, right? Things get out of whack. So it kind of like just pulls you back to kind of like being where you're at. So I want to ask you this. Okay. So I want to know more about your, uh, more about your product. I want to sure. know, like, is this something that I could use to find properties or just to do my direct marketing, like SMS calls, postcards, what are what what are some benefits of signing up? I, I, I'm I'm not asking for the audience. I'm asking for myself. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, 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 the, that's the power of podcasting. You ask the questions for yourself. So, what I'll add to what you said last time is amplification. It's not necessarily that it, it's you you work less. It just amplifies your time that you do work. So the thing about the CRM is I use it for podcasting, not necessarily a business, but I use it for podcasting. I use it for uh, my data company. I use it for real estate. And I use it for, I man to manage all my clients too, because I'm a software owner. So I manage all my clients through the CRM itself that ever I give to all my clients. So I can tell people that you can 
you can you can make you can reach out to real estate because we have clients doing six figure months and we have i'm managing over 300 clients myself through the crm so it can do whatever you need it to do you just gotta you just gotta you gotta understand how it works so a lot of people get overwhelmed and this is for there's two types of people there's techie people and there's not techie people if you're not one you're the other and you know who you are <laughs> the difference is is that like Everybody, everybody's used to using the standard of Podio, and I hate Podio. Like Podio, like I started. The reason why I, went, I actually went down the Podio route, I'm like everybody's using Podio. Let me try Podio, and I'm like, oh my, this is like I'm a techie person. And I struggle with Podio. So like after after doing down that road, I came across HiveMind. Card started to have the opportunity to create it. HiveMind came about, but the awesome thing about it is that you can text, you can email, you can do websites, you can do webhooks, you can do. Literally, whatever you want to do, you can do it. So, like, everybody knows Max Maxwell. Max Maxwell, if you follow him a lot, he has what you call the lead conveyor belt. I don't know if you've heard of the lead conveyor belt. Have you heard of the lead conveyor belt? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, if everybody doesn't know what the lead conveyor belt lead, and this is all his thing, is you contact people the way they want to be contacted in the cheapest format possible. That way you can convert leads as cheap as possible down the line. So, what does that look like? For him, his his I think his first one is text. For us, email. How many people, when you skip trace a list, you get emails but never use them? You know how much email costs? Usually free because you can send emails from Gmail. It's usually free. So with this email, everybody with an email, create a simple email campaign, add every, every contact, every email you get to that list goes to the email campaign. Why? Because you can automate it. You don't have to worry about it. You just let it go. People, people open their emails like me. I might not open it, but I'll see every email because I'm deleting each one. I, like, I'm the type of person where like, I get anxiety when I have 20 emails unread. Like, I'm going to delete them. Same. <laughs> Same, bro. Same. And then you then you talk to people like my partner who has 100,000 emails. And every time I see his phone, I see 100,000 and I get anxiety. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? But for me, like, I have to like keep that down to zero. Like, if it goes in the spam, it goes in the spam. But if it's in my inbox, I have to delete it. I have to read it, delete it, or save it. It's one of the three. And that's it. So emails, incorporating emails is a simple thing. Create a simple campaign. Just let it go. Add everybody, everybody's emails to it. Let it go. My first deal I actually did was through email. <laughs> mm. It's crazy. Like, it was a PPC lead. And this is a side note. It was a PPC lead. But I don't want to talk to the customer because I was new. I was doing PPC. They filled the form. So I just started emailing them. Boom, boom, boom. 15 emails later, I got a contract, sold it to a buyer, made six grand. Via email. So email works. So we got, you, have, you have email, text is the next cheapest, RVMs, RVMs, cold calling, cold calling, and then direct mail. So like a lot of land investors, because I'm a land investor space, they go straight to direct mail. They direct mail everybody, send blind offers, all this stuff. Problem with direct mail is you're, you're spending 50 cents a letter. And you can only reach out to so many people. So when you build out a campaign, you can email everybody. You can text everybody pretty cheaply. You can RVM everybody pretty cheaply. So now what the beauty of my system is that the, the problem with other systems is that all they can do is maybe one thing. You might have one, pro, you might have one program that does RVMs. You might have one program that does e emails. You might have one program that does text. Now you're all over the place and it's hard to coordinate and make sure all that stuff goes in order. But with HiveMind, you can literally create an email campaign add everybody to it text text rvm cold call over a week span and then if they don't respond after a couple of contacts or a week or two months or whatever a month you can send a webhook to your mail company and send direct mail so i could run that same that that same strategy for say a marketing business or a fitness business mm -hmm. okay yo side note we going we got to talk <laughs> we got to talk daddy we got to talk okay so Man, that was really good. So marketing, that kind of like answers my question. How are you marketing in 2022, right? Is that how you're marketing in a way? Or there's a little bit more so on top of that? We do We do a lot of, we do, we're do. we doing a couple of different things right now. We just started a couple of different campaigns ourselves personally. So before we were texting a lot and we just text everybody. I have I have a book data list that I would just text everybody. And we were getting, we got, we got a free house sub two by texting. We got a 5,000 square foot house. It was like a five bed, nine bath house in, in San Antonio through this list, just texting. So right now we're doing texting. I hate cold calling and we hate managing cold callers. So we have a cold call company, cold calling for us. And we're doing PPC right now as well. 
And that that's all ran through HiveMind. So we have a HiveMind website coordinated comes into the system. They get text immediately whenever a lead comes in. And we're doing PPC right now. And we just started doing direct mail as well. So we're kind of doing we're trying we're trying a bunch of different other services to see if we can combine it all to make something better. We we kind of use a we kind of use the versions of each one. So we use like we use different lead generators inbound to our system, and then we use this this the system follow up system behind it once it comes in. And I love to hear what's working for other investors. I, I love to hear this. And like this is for me, this is again, it's so close to home for me. I am so intrigued by this because I want to know, like, what's your professional take on automation? Like, where do you see, where do you see business automation in 2052? Man, I don't even know. Because I the, I think the forms of marketing might change. Because mm. one, one thing that's tried and true, and I'll take this probably to my grave, is that direct mail is never going to go away. Texting may go away. Cold calling may go away. Emailing may go away. Who knows? But direct mail, like, there's always going to be a physical address, a physical forwarding address that's always going to be there. So I think direct mail is always gonna. If you understand that, you can probably take that to the next. Takes that to the next flip of marketing, whatever that is. But it's just, I mean, it could be marketing in the metaverse. I have no idea. <laughs> there's really, there's really no. Th- you can buy like a billboard in the metaverse. I don't know. I don't know what that's gonna look like. But there's, there's always gonna be somebody marketing because that's how people get more business. So there's gonna be some form of marketing out there. And you should have to leverage it. And that is a you know, meta universe. That is a story for another day. Yeah, so I want to ask you wholesaling real estate, right? What is wholesaling real estate and how can someone get started? Easy ways to get started is don't get overwhelmed and learn. I think the big number one is understand what you're doing because systems and tools will come. But if you don't understand what you're doing, you're going to go out real quick because you might be paying for stuff and you might have not have the budget to pay for stuff. So like everybody's like, oh, you need this and this to succeed. I'm like, you might not need that. You can do go off the free products. So free products, what you what you can use free products, driving for dollars. Write down your list, take pictures of properties when you're driving by. You can do that with your phone. You don't have to pay for driving for dollars. You don't have to pay for deal machine. You don't have to pay for none of that. Just start writing stuff down and, and doing what you can for free. Because the fastest way to get out of business is spend all your marketing dollars and be stuck at zero and you're in debt. That's just the fastest way to go out of business. So do everything you can for free. You can skip trace for free. You can do all that stuff for free. So it comes down to time, money, knowledge. Everybody that's once in wholesaling, make sure you get the knowledge. But then it comes down to time or money. So some people have good paying nine to fives where they can afford to do other things and pay for because they have the money. Other people might have the time but not the money. So they have to do stuff the free way because they have time to do it and not the money. So it's, it's weighing out the different things. So one of my clients is a 22-year-old, still works a full-time job roofer. I think he sells roofing. He's not, he doesn't actually do the roofs, but he sells it. Came into our system. He's like, I have money, but no time. Okay, money? Well, what do you do? What do you do if you have money and uh, less time? Well, we, we brought him inbound leads. So he, we have a PPC campaign we call Hive Leads that we're just ramping up right now. He's been with it six months, done 10 deals in six months with a full-time job as a roofer using our PPC setup called Hive Leads. Nice. What's the other side look like? Well, I have more time, less money. You use the free roofers. You, you drive for dollars. Drive for dollars is the best list you're gonna get just because you can visually see it's 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 in disrepair. So drive for dollars, Google Voice, True People Search, Skip Trace, call, and find the leads yourself. All for free. It's gonna cost you gas money, that's about it, and time. So it comes down to if you have time or money. Would you say is it better to JV up on on like deals like that? Does someone work with someone that's more experienced, or go to solo route to move this way you get your feet wet? I'm a big user of JVs just because you got to pay to play sometimes, and you're gonna pay usually in JV deals till you learn, but you'll learn a lot quicker by doing JV deals. It might help you lose. It might help you from preventing losing a deal. It might help you from learn something while you're doing it. So I'm I'm 100 for JVs. Yes, you might have to give up 50% of the deal. You might have to give up $10,000 of a deal where you're, oh, you might have paid, overpaid somebody, but you acquired the knowledge. Now you, can, you don't have to use that person again, per se, if you didn't know what you're doing. So my partner, he, he, he had his first contract, this, his, his story. His first contract, he's like, I have this deal. Put it on market. Put it on the Facebook group. And somebody messaged him, hey, take that off the Facebook group. I'm going to buy that deal. He's like, all right, delete it. How much are you going to give me for it? He's like, uh, he's like, how much do you want for the deal? He's like, I don't know, whatever's fair. 
So the dude's like, I'll give you five grand for it. Like, All right. So the dude paid five grand. For, I think it was like 35 to five, five grand for the deal. But the, the guy has been mentoring my partner for three years because he made 50,000 off that deal, 50,000 off that deal. So now that was like his high, high ticket mastermind. He paid for that by giving a deal to somebody. And now he's made like six, he's almost made all, but over half a million dollars off of the knowledge he's acquired from that one person. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. So JV is definitely the way to go. Definitely the way to go. That's it, it's, it, it's good that you mentioned that because my first deal closed on a JV. I was stuck. You know, I'm, I'm here in, I live in New York. Our first deal was a condo in Atlanta, Georgia. I needed boots on the ground. That was the other thing. This was during the pandemic, right? Where, nice. you know, you need boots on the ground, virtual, you know, the recession proof, virtual wholesaling, whatever. And I got on um, this app, Clubhouse. I got on Clubhouse and one of those real estate rooms, just networking. Hey, I got this deal I'm working on. I've been stuck with it for a while. So told someone about it. They helped me get it done. Couple weeks done, boom, and like you said, um, yeah, do the fifty-fifty split. But I learned a lot. There's a lot that you could also learn from the partnership. So that kind of like leads me to maybe this is a general question: What are some benefits to having a business partner or working with a business partner? I am a big fan of it, and not it's not for everybody. So you always have to find somebody that has your weak that has your strength and weaknesses. So. Yeah, you as an individual have to know what your strengths are and have to know what your weaknesses are. Then if you partner, make sure you partner with somebody that has the opposite of you. The reason why I say that is because if you have similar strengths, you're going to conflict because you both have the same strengths. So you're always going to think one or the other person is right. So one thing me and my partner have is he is zero systems, 100% negotiation, whereas I'm 100% systems and zero. I can do negotiation, but it's not, I don't want to. <laughs> so it's down to the it's down to what what are you good at and what are they good at and it's compat compatibility. So you don't have to partner with people to do business. That is 100% a fallacy. You can do this by yourself and hire everybody out. So there is a book called Traction. It's a book called Traction. I, I don't read very many books, but I read that book. But it's it's finding it's about finding the, your weaknesses and and compatibility with other people. So it's a visionary and integrator. So if you are a visionary, you can hire out an integrator and or partner with them, but they always have to get make sure they're they're high paid because it's a it's a very demanding job to be an integrator because you're essentially running the back end. And a lot of people think, well, I run the whole business and he does nothing. Well, they do their own thing as far as talking sales. It might be a lot of other strengths that you're not good at. So understanding your partner and what their strengths and weaknesses are is a hundred percent the thing, but it's just a lot of partnerships fail because they have conflicting strengths where they're the same. Yeah. And that's just, that's I was, just, I was going to add strong personalities, ego. There's a lot of things that could kind of like the real, a really good partnership things to avoid. So yeah, that's a good question. Yo, so I want to ask you, you know, you're a podcaster, you're a podcast host yourself, Hive with us podcast. Can, with you podcast. can you tell us a little bit more about your podcast show, the content that you're pushing out? And I also got to give you credit, man, because if I correct me if I'm wrong, you did over 190 episodes within nine months. Tell us a little bit more about that. It's been an interesting journey. So my biggest, I'll tell you where the podcast started. So yeah, we, we, we did a episode, we'll say Tuesdays, episode 202 released today. We started September, 2021. It's now June June 14th. So it's been nine months, 202 episodes. It's been hard. And the reason it's been crazy, it's been crazy too, but it's been crazy good. So where it all started is I reached out to bigger pockets to advertise with them. And they're like, it's $10,000 for a three month commitment. And I'm like, what, what? I'm like, I'm just going to build my own. So my whole, my whole thought process was, Bigger pockets, they're like their main shows, like almost 700 episodes, but they've been doing it for 10 years. They've been doing it for 10 years. So I'm like, let's, let's be, let's be intentional. Let's be, let's do, let's do it on purpose. But I'm going to try and do five episodes a week for as long as I can. Because if I do that for a full year, that's like 200 episodes, 250 episodes a year. I can do that in four years versus 10. But it's not off the work of my back because then you can hire hosts. So what's the benefit you provide the hosts? Well, you give them – well, I think podcasting as a general is that there's a couple things you get for podcasting. You get 
you get confirmation of your of you yourself as an individual because you're providing content. You get education because you get to ask intentional questions to your guests who are smarter than you. Number three is you get SEO, which is online what, online ranking. And then there's and there's a bunch of benefits you get from that too. But having the time to do it. So one of the cool things about podcasting is it kind of came a kind of kind of became a passion project for me. I was kind of doing it at first just to kind of help brand stability and help grow the brand organically. And now it's uh, I've really enjoyed doing it and it's become more of a passion project for me. And it's more providing good education. I don't like shorter shows, so all my shows are like 45 minutes to an hour. And I brought in co-hosts to help me bring out produce content. Uh, we're doing stuff in Spanish. I have a I have a translator. We have a couple episodes in Spanish. I'm trying to do more. We're just producing education, real estate, business practices. I've talked to a couple. Like one thing I like about my podcast is like it's not just real estate people. It's just business people, people that do good business. So I've talked to a couple of like chief marketing officers of Fortune, like big, big billion dollar companies. And it's just learning different marketing techniques and strategies, negotiation strategies, being intentional, what your purpose is, hiring. Like all this stuff that everybody, you need to understand in business. That's what I, I kind of bring out in different things. Airbnb host, you name it. I had a, couple, a couple different people on it. But it's just one thing One thing I like about my podcast is I'm very intentional of who I I bring on. So one of the big things about my, my podcast is there's a lot of my episodes are my clients. And the reason why I do that is because I want them to experience the power of podcasting and get that benefit of it and to get their story out. Because I like every individual has something that could teach me. I don't care what you've done or how long you've been doing it. Everybody has something to teach me. There's some type of experience or path you've taken down in your life that I can learn from. And you don't have to be a billionaire to tell me something I can learn from. So I really like interviewing my clients because they I kind of I kind of put them on a pedestal. With my other high-level guests, and it just it puts it makes them uh, come to light, and they get deals from it too. So that's the other cool thing. You know what I love about podcasting? I love I love the fact that I ask questions and I could find out what someone's really really passionate about. You should see your face when you when I asked you about podcasting. You started talking. You just started going in. I'm like, yeah, yeah. When you said passion project, I'm like, I could tell. I could tell. It, it's so, man, it's just so interesting. I, I feel that literally the same way. And you said when you invite guests, man, that's literally my strategy. I invite people that are smarter, more successful. I was talking about this earlier. So I can pick your brain, man. I, I, can, I can learn some things. And as you said, you can learn from everybody, everybody. And going back to a question I asked you earlier, how do you market in 2022? Uh, this is another way of marketing, right? Uh, podcasting. Your yep. networking, creating content, you, as you said, SEO, credibility too. You know, it gives you a lot of credibility for sure because people get to hear, they get to hear you, they get to see you, and they get to dive into the sauce. Man, this is just so good right now. I'm loving this. I got to use that strategy about this podcast about like kind of like ramping up. I like how you reached out to Bigger Pockets. I'm a huge fan of Bigger Pockets. I listen to that podcast all day, every day. And there's always something going on in that show, on their show that I could always learn and, and, and just apply. And not just things that are tied to real estate, things outside of that too. So that's a really exciting part. So I want to ask you, what is like what are your what are your intentions like being on a podcast show like this show? Like what are your intentions when you appear on podcast shows and you, you dive into your story? What do you want people to know about? you the person it's not even i mean it's not even about me honestly like every time you do a podcast i like the varying conversations because everybody's going to ask different questions because based off of their curiosities or their questions in general like or their or their niche so like i've had on different podcasts and they ask me nothing about real estate like, i'm perfectly fine with that because one thing about podcasting is you get to exercise yourself and you get to have normal conversations just like and everybody can watch. That's the beauty of it. So podcasting, it really opens people up to who you are as an individual, and you can't hide that. I can't script this question and give you an answer if I'm if I'm coached. You know, it's one of those things like this is this is free flowing. This is me. 
It is, it's me. There's no, there's no hiding that. So when I come onto the podcast, it's more just ed- educating the people because a lot of people that they, they hear certain things, but they might not be ready to hear it. That's the thing. So mm. there's different levels of hearing and it's based off of your discernibility and what you can actually see. So this conversation, if you're maybe just coming into the business, maybe way over your head and that's fine. But as you learn and experience more of the education, you come back to this and listen and you'll hear something you didn't necessarily understand the first time you heard it. And that's the power of like podcasting it and books, the power of all that stuff is that the more you consume it or more of it, the more you'll might understand and catch. Like I, I talked to another like longtime business owner and like, we're talking about like employees hiring, finding good employees. Like we're talking about that. Like if you have no employees, it's not going to make sense to you. It's just not because you never hired anybody. So for me, it's just like, you, you got to consume over and over again because it's, it's going to, it's going to stick in different ways the more you do it. So like if, the, if you're listening to this, if you're listening to the episode and it's over your head, that's perfectly fine. Keep continuing to listen because one day it's going to stick and you're like, man, I heard Daniel say that. I heard Yahavi say that. It makes sense now. And that's the power. That's the power, man. It's so funny you say this because I literally said this earlier this morning. There's a difference between listening and hearing. Like I hear everything you just said, right? I I, I could interview you, pay full on a thousand percent uh, attention, but I'm listening as the host, right? When I go back and I listen to this once it goes public, I'm listening as a listener. So like my ears are open, I'm hearing things differently and I'm pretty sure I asked you a question that kind of went over my head. That's natural, but when I go back and I listen to it, I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, man. I gotta, I gotta jot that one down, like, that's really good. But it, it, man, dog, you gotta be, got me over here cheesing, man. Cause this is, this is good stuff. Like this is what people need to hear. But how, how this ties to real estate, when you're like, say for example, you're making these cold calls, you're talking to sellers over the phone. There's definitely a difference in active listening, right? You're, are you listening to actually listen or are you just listening to respond? So if someone's saying, hey, you know, I have this distressed property, it's going into foreclosure, all you hear is assignment fee, right? Or, or something like that. Motivated seller, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> exactly. But you're not hearing like, how did it get to this point? And if you can provide that solution, I believe you said, um, something earlier about uh, subject two, for example, you know the right solution to provide. You know, you know the saying, a good listener is a good speaker. So it's like, I feel personally, this is just my opinion in real estate. Whenever you're talking to the sellers, I always say this, you, if they're talking more than you, that is a really good sign. If they're just venting to you like you're the therapist, that is a really good sign. Then you could take that, reiterate it and serve it to them on a gold platter because that's your cheat sheet. They gave you the answers. All you have to do is hit every single bulletin point and you will get where you need to be. I just find that really intriguing. Man, that's really good stuff, man. The, the other part is being human, man. We've that sent we, 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 we've had we've had conversation with clients and we want my, we might hey your birthday's coming up. Get them a birthday card. If it's if somebody passed away and or something happened, send them flowers. It's being human and understanding the pain and not seeing them as all dollar signs because everyone, everybody comes down to it. They're all individuals. They all have pains. They all have weaknesses. And it's just understanding that they're human. I mean, if you, if the power of listening and understanding what the conversation is about, if they tell you a pain point, Hey, my birthday's coming up. My anniversary's coming up and it's just been a hard time. You know what? Come back the next time, bring them some, bring them some chocolate or something. I don't know. Just separate yourself from everybody else and you'll get, you'll get a lot further in a way as far as internally, as far as providing good things and externally, because they might do the deal with you just because you were actually vulnerable and understood what they're saying. Very good point. So on that same point, great question for you outside of, you know, work and, 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 and and being professional, running a business, what does your downtime consist of? Like, you know, outside of working, what, what do you do to make yourself feel human i've been i've been golfing i've been golfing and i I spend a lot of time with the family man a lot of people they get lost in the the space of making money and it's not really about the money it's what you do with the freedom that money gives you so money isn't really my motivator it's more of the freedom 
I, I don't care what it have in the bank account. It's more of the freedom I get to use with it. So like this year has been crazy. I've been traveling like once a month for like the past six months and it's just been busy. I've taken my wife and kids with me. Sometimes they're, we're going on a family vacation and it's just having the time freedom to kind of do whatever you want and not necessarily having to have a big money goal. The money, the money is going to be there if you're doing the right things for the right people, but having the time freedom to do whatever you want and just exercise your freedom and family. And that, that was the biggest reason, like I never mentioned this, but when I, when I started my nine to five, my biggest driving force to start entrepreneurship was, my kid, uh, my firstborn. So my wife was pregnant. I was trucking at the time and my wife was pregnant. She's like, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, oh shit. And it re- being a, being a father forces you to grow. So I'm like, let's, let's do this now. Cause I'm like, there's no right time to start entrepreneurship. I'll say that a million times to the day I die. There's no right time. It's just, you gotta do it now. <laughs> so I literally worked my ass off for nine months I took two week vacation because I had it built up because I literally worked like six days a week for nine months, stacked up all this money. I took a two week vacation. It was right during the holidays. I had some holiday. I had like Christmas and new year's plus my two week vacation, took a three month paternity leave and never went back. And that's how I got, that's how I got into business. And that's that's my, my, my daughter turns five this year. That's man. That's blessings on blessings, man. All I heard was golf. And I was just like, what you golf, man, like you golf. Wait, that's first things first, dad to dad, man. If that doesn't motivate you, I don't know what will, right? So, man, that, that's an incredible blessing. I want to ask you, when you were, did you become in a way who you needed when you were younger? Or did you envision yourself doing this line of work? Or was there something else that you wanted to do when you were a kid? Man, I was I was a lost child. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know what I was going to do. And that's that's the beauty of getting older. You don't know what path you're gonna take and how you're gonna get there. A lot of the steps I've taken were just to do better and make better decisions, and I kind of ended up down this road. I didn't. I still don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm still young. I'm 30. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do in five years. Like everyone's like, "What's your five year goal?" I'm like, I don't "Fucking no. I'm just I'm living. I'm living, I'm living. I'm living today, man." Yeah. I'm living today. I don't know. I don't know what that, I didn't expect to be in real estate. That wasn't my goal. I just ended up that way because I was I was doing I was trying I was in business and trying to make money another way. That's how I ended up in real estate. So it's I'm just going, man. It's it's there's no set path that I'm destination that I'm going. I mean, the big the biggest thing I wanted to hit was having time freedom to spend time with my family. And I've hit that. So like what, what else do you do after that? You just keep going. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's good stuff. Man, there was just a lot, a lot of good in this interview, man. A lot of good silver lining. What would you say, you know, you know, summing up this episode, what would you say is the biggest takeaway you want listeners to take away from this episode, hearing your story, listening to your background story and, and everything that you have going on? What is the takeaway message for the listeners for you? Be intentional. Don't waste your time. A lot of people, they think they're working hard, but they're not. There, there was there was a time where like I've been like I, I talked to one of my clients like I've been I've been trying to get my first deal for two months and I'm like you know how long it took me to get my first deal it was on the seventh month <laughs> it took me to get my first deal so you gotta be you gotta be and I, I locked up a bunch of properties a bunch of them fell through I didn't get my first closed deal until seven months in after starting and I'm like. You got five more months to go. Then you can talk to me because, I mean, I've, I've done more work than you did to get started. So I don't want to hear it. <laughs> like, I don't want to hear those excuses because I've, I went through the hard road. Like, I've already been down the hard path. I've If you haven't gone further than me, I can't I can't help you because you got to do the work when it comes down to it. So it's just, it's just being intentional. A lot of people think they're working hard, but they're not really working. And making sure you're, you capitalize your time that you do use. A lot of what I do right now is this because i'm very intentional with setting aside time to do this every day like i i almost do like an interview a day <laughs> that's what it feels like whether yeah. I'm, I'm 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 hosting or i'm guesting i'm doing an interview a day and the last few months have been crazy i was doing like two to three a day in some fashion whether i was hosting or guesting and that's just being intentional on what what i wanted to do so like this whole podcasting thing it's being intentional providing the content providing the value any way you see fit, 
and having just conversations that aren't the same. That's been my, always my goal. It's just having conversations that aren't the same. Man, this was awesome. All right, yo, Daniel, please do everyone a favor. Shout out your social media, your website, and your podcast. Where can we follow you, keep up, and subscribe to everything you got going on? So we have a dollar course. You can actually text us at 210-972-1842. Just text the keyword course, and it's a literally a dollar. It'll send you a link, all automation. That's using HiveMind. If you want to learn more about our product and service, we're literally on every platform you can think of. Just search HiveMind CRM. We try and drive everybody to the Facebook group. We have a, a private Facebook group with like 2,200 people, almost 2,300 people right now. And it's just networking, man. One of the cool things about that I never even mentioned about HiveMind is the community, man. We have an awesome community nationwide that people are just helping out each other do deals. Like one of my, not one of my clients, I had seven clients get paid on one deal last month just by networking through the group. And the community side is, is definitely a hack. There's stuff that I struggled with early on because you don't know. And community is definitely a hack to learn and do better more everywhere. So get a part of community, find some find a group you like, resonate with them, talk to them network just just participate if you if you're flying the wall you're never going to participate you're never going to get anywhere because this whole thing is networking we're having an event in fort lauderdale this year august 25th and 26th you can get those tickets at hive5.com slash summit we do an annual event for all our clients one of my two of my clients met there one of them just quit his job and he met his like his money partner there and now like one was the money partner and he was like the systems partner so they both ended up meeting at my event and now they they do real estate in like 20 states now <laughs> that's what's, man i love hearing stories like that and they, met, uh, and they met at my event man it's pretty cool so sick. Oh, man i love hearing that oh, i love hearing stories like that that is amazing again some way somehow we are all connected we are all connected and i just yep. that's literally living for right there oh man this was really good for the listeners i want to thank you for listening watching however you're listening or consuming this content this was a real treat i, I enjoyed recording this i enjoyed talking to daniel daniel i want to thank you again for spending your time on the pod today this was really fun i'm i'm really excited more so about hive mind and going forward i got to get into that group i got to definitely plug myself in you know me i got to plug myself in i got to plug myself into to your community because Man, this was just really, really good. Like I always say, what good is information if you don't apply it? Like Daniel said, be intentional. Be intentional. Stream, subscribe to the St. Clair Speaks Show podcast. I will catch you in the next episode. I'm out. Peace. The show is sponsored by The List Guys. Do you need more leads in your local or virtual market? One in 10 small businesses don't invest in any kind of marketing. The List Guys have over 35 plus list types to choose from and you can mix and match any list or criteria. We also use the skip trace list and provide up to seven numbers and email addresses. Every list you purchase will be scrubbed against previous purchases. The List Guys are here to save you time. Contact The List Guys today at www.onelistguys.com. That's www.the number one listguys.com.